This video includes a demonstration on using hand pollinations to make crosses in common bean, Phaseolus vulgaris. Due to flower structure and legumes, these methods are broadly applicable to other legumes including runner bean, pea, sweet pea, fava bean, peanut, and others. To begin, you'll need to identify flowers at the appropriate stages for pollination. The paternal parent will be an open flower, which is indicative of pollen shed. The maternal parent will be an unopen flower that is within a day or so of opening. If you look at these examples, you can see both maternal and paternal parents that are at varying stages for successful cross-pollination. It is important to note that the maternal and paternal flowers will be at different morphological stages, and due to this you will need to have beans at varying stages of flowering to begin making cross-pollinations. Once you have determined the presence of both paternal and maternal flowers, you can move forward to the emasculation of the maternal flower. The emasculation of the maternal flower is done prior to flower opening to ensure that pollen shed has not begun and that self-pollination will not occur. It's best to do pollination early in the morning to find flowers at these stages. There are six stages of the emasculation process. The separation of the banner petal, the folding back of the banner petal, the removal of wing petals, the removal of the fused keel petals, the removal of the 10 anthers, and a confirmation of no remaining anthers on the flower. You'll begin by opening the outer petal, known as the banner petal. You can do this by identifying the line that divides the petal along the base of the flower bud and separate it using forceps. You will then gently fold the banner petal back and away from the remaining petals. When folding back the banner, be careful not to damage it, as you'll want to keep it for future use. Once the banner has been folded back, you will identify the wing petals, which are tucked directly inside of the banner petal. You will remove both wing petals. The wing petals are attached to the keel petals, which surrounds the reproductive organs. You will want to leave this portion of the flower undisturbed until the wing petals have been removed. Then, using the forceps, you will begin opening the keel petal. To do this, Gently grasp the petal near the base, being careful not to grab any tissue beyond the petal. Slowly begin to unfurl the keel, being very cautious to not break the stigma, which is coiled inside of the keel petal. This stage can be the most difficult, as the stigma is small and fragile. If broken, you will need to begin the process on a new flower. Ideally, you should be able to remove a strip of tissue from the keel petals that runs from the base to the tip where the stigma is located. Often, however, the strip runs out and it is necessary to continue the tear to the tip of the petals. Once the keel is removed, you should be able to identify the 10 male organs or stamen and the one female organ, the stigma. Since this flower will be the maternal parent, you will remove all 10 anthers from the stamen and keep the stigma intact. While removing the anthers, be sure to count them to ensure that the emasculation is complete. If an anther is left behind, it could begin to shed pollen in the coming days and interfere with your desired cross-pollination. At this point, the emasculation process is complete and it is time to prepare the paternal flower. Prior to beginning the emasculation process, you should have identified a flower at the appropriate stage for pollen donation. There are six steps in this part of the hand pollination process. Flexing one of the wing petals, removing the pollen covered stigma, brushing or hooking the pollen donor stigma onto the maternal stigma, closing the banner petal, taping the petals shut, and final steps to ensure successful pod set. To begin, bring the paternal flower close to the maternal parent 
and extract the stigma from the paternal flower by pressing on a wing petal. This should cause the stigma to protrude out of the keel petals. While holding the wing petals in a flexed position, remove the stigma from the paternal flower. It should be covered in pollen from its own anthers. Here you can see a close-up of the pollen on the paternal flower's stigma. Bean pollen is gray in color and looks like small grains of sugar a coating the stigma or styla brush. Carry out the cross-pollination by sticking the two stigmas together. You can try to hook the paternal stigma onto the maternal stigma, leaving it behind when you close the outer petals, or simply brush them together to distribute the pollen. Once you have finished pollinating, carefully close the banner petals around the stigma to retain high humidity within the flower. You can then gently pinch the banner petals close with a piece of scotch tape. In the final step of hand pollinations, you will want to remove all other flower buds that are growing on the same flower cluster as your hand pollinated bud. Additionally, it is important to make note of the cross that was made. We use the notation of maternal parent name crossed by paternal parent name. You may also include other relevant information on the label, such as the date of the cross-pollination or the name of whoever made the cross. This information is written on a jewelry tag and the string of the tag is looped around the pedestal of the flower. Do not hang the tag on a leaf petiole at the base of the raceme or on the stem next to the raceme. Leaf petioles may drop before you harvest the mature pod and other pods may form on the same raceme as your cross, making it impossible to know which pod resulted from your cross. By following these steps and practicing your technique, you should be ready to successfully make crosses through hand pollination. Tracking other metrics such as temperature or time of day when cross was made may help you to further refine your process. As mentioned earlier, it is best to perform crosses early in the morning because as the day progresses, anthers in the flower you are crossing on may have begun to shed pollen. We hope that you found this tutorial helpful. This video was put together by a team of researchers in the Vegetable Breeding Lab at Oregon State University. On a final note, we would like to acknowledge our funding sources that allowed us to put time into creating these videos. Thank you.